this is the beginner friendly step by step guide to what I think is the best way to create realistic looking 3D water in Blender. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. More exciting news on that in a little bit. Over the past 15 years of 3D graphics, water is something that I've found myself creating the most. And I've always been evolving the way I do it in Blender, changing it and tweaking the way I render it. Just like you need water to survive, you might need water more than anything else in your 3D renders. So in this video, you're gonna learn what I think is the best way to create a standard water shader for your scenes. Of course, I didn't come up with all of this on my own. Credit goes to multiple members of the incredible Blender community. So starting off in Blender 4.0, Two, hit X and delete the default cube. Then hit Shift-8 and add in a mesh cube. We're using a cube instead of a plane so we can add volume to our 3D water. So let's set this cube up to render a little bit nicer. We'll hit S and then 2 to scale it up two times, then hit G and Z to pull it up along the Z axis, holding Control to snap it right to the grid. Then go Shift-A and add in a plane for our floor and scale it up nice and big. For a few render settings, we'll go ahead and delete the lamp and quick switch to our world settings here and open up an HDR environment, texture. You know the drill by now, but Polyhaven has all kinds of great HDRs for you to download. You can find one there. I'm gonna choose the lakeside one. This will change the way your water looks quite a bit because it will be reflecting your HDR a lot. Then switching to your render engine, change it to cycles, enable GPU compute, and switch to rendered view. There we have it. We'll just give our plane a nice dark gray texture here by giving it a new material and giving the color that's nice and darker. Also, we'll make it a flat material so take the roughness all the way up and then the specular here, take the IOR level way down. Now for our water shader, we can deform it in two different ways, either using material displacements or just actually displacing it in 3D, which I'll go ahead and do now. So for this, you're gonna wanna tab into edit mode, right click and hit choose subdivide. Repeat that a handful of times so you have a good amount of vertices, probably about five or six times. Then tab out of edit mode and go to your modifier stack, click add modifier, and here we're gonna choose the physics ocean modifier. You can see right away it changes it into a plane and gives it this big shape. But like I said, we want a cube for volume. So I'm going to change the geometry from generate to displace. And that leaves us with our cube and just adds the wave displacement to it. The resolution will want to crank up quite a bit. So just click and drag for the viewport and render here and give it 32. You can right away see we have some wave deformations on the top there. And the only thing we're going to do is we're going to take the size of this way down. So I'm going to go down to about a 0.15, a little bit too much wave. So under the waves, I'm going to change the scale here down to about a 0.2. So there we have some nice waves added to the top of our cube, but nothing crazy. Except we want the water to be animated. And this is really easy to do actually. So under time here, this number is in seconds on our scene. We can go ahead and animate this value. Now, instead of just adding keyframes to this value, what you can do is you can power it with a driver. And this is really cool. If you click on the time here and just type out hashtag frame, you can see that boom, it's purple once you hit return and it's animated. Every frame is going to be changing another frame here, which is cool but also way too fast, as you can see when we play that back. And that's because we want this to change one every 24 frames, which is the FPS of our Blender file here. So what you can do is first, and this is important, you wanna right click and delete driver because you won't be able to change it until you delete the old one first. Then you can go ahead and put that back to one and then type in hashtag frame again. And this time choose slash 24, hit return. And now it's only gonna change from one to two every 24 frames in our timeline. And as you can see, if we play that back, that's a nice speed for our water. Cool, and now it's time to render. And speaking about cool looking renders, it just so happens that this video is sponsored by Skillshare, and I'm excited to announce that I just released my first class on Skillshare, a complete beginner guide on creating an entire isometric sci-fi world in Blender. You'll learn the entire creation process from modeling to scattering with geometry nodes to rendering with EV Next. Check it out with the first link in the video description. And while you're at Skillshare, it's always a great time to learn something completely new. Being the largest community for online learning creatives. They have so many legendary classes on cool new skills that you could be learning today. From film to animating to painting to interpretive dance. And for the first 500 viewers to use my link in the video description, you will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare, which includes access to my brand new class and all other classes on Skillshare. So take advantage of that link and get started today. Now it's on to our realistic water material. So we're gonna go ahead and split our window here. We'll leave it in rendered view on the right here. And on the left, I'll switch it to our shader editor. And let's give that cube a new material. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do on our basic principle shader here is take the roughness all the way down to zero or very close to zero, because we want it to be shiny. Then the IOR value can be set to 1.333, which is the IOR value of real world physics for water. Then under transmission, give it a weight of one. 
And as you can see, suddenly it's nice and watery looking. It actually kind of looks like an ice cube though with the way it's rendering. You can right click and choose shade smooth. And as you can see, it's looking good, but the light isn't really passing through it properly. Now a little trick to do this is by going shift A, adding in an input, light path node and connecting the is camera ray to the alpha on your principal shader. Suddenly the water is no longer casting weird shadows and the light is passing through it. You can see this looks way more like a droplet or cube in this case of water. Now second is displacing the water. So to do this, we'll go shift A and add in a vector bump node. Connect this to the normal on your principal shader. Then go shift A again and add in a texture, noise texture. Just connecting the factor to the height here, you can see we have a whole bunch of displacement. We want to take the strength way down to something like 8.1, and then take the scale up on your noise texture to something like 35. You can see that's adding some detail, and you could use this without even needing the ocean modifier if you were doing a large scale water scene or something. But we are using the ocean modifier, so because of that, we're gonna turn the strength way down and just use it as some subtle displacements in the water, which looks kind of nice. And now it's time for the special sauce of the video, and that's adding fake caustics to the water. You actually can add real caustics in Blender Cycles now, but we're gonna fake them for this because we have more control over it and currently implementation has a few bugs with it and we can't use things like volume with Cycles caustics. Now what is caustics you might be asking? That's sort of the weird patterns that you'll see reflecting on the floor in a pool or in the lake where the sun is passing through the water and setting up those sort of bright highlights on the surface floor of your pool or the ocean. This is a method similar to one that Max Hay actually posted about and it's really cool. I've had a ton of fun playing around with it. You go shift A and you add in a light area light. Go ahead and scale it up to be the same size as your cube, <laughs> as your cube. And then go ahead and hit G and Z to pull it up to be right around the surface level of your water. We're gonna give it a very strong power. Go ahead and change this to like 5,000. Shining just a ton of light down right now. We're gonna change the beam spread here down to a two. So it's a very focused light just at the base of our cube. Now under the materials with the area light selected, we can choose use nodes. And just like a material, we have nodes now on that area lamp. So go shift A and add in a texture, wave texture. Take the scale way down to something like a 0.3, turn the distortion way up to something high like a 25, and then connect the color to the emission color here. Right away we get a cool wave pattern being projected onto the base of the floor. To control this more, go shift A and add in a converter color ramp, drop it right in there, and pull the blacks up real tight. So you just get those tight bands coming in from that wave texture. Go ahead and make the scale a little bit bigger, we'll go at 0.2. Then I'm gonna grab both the color ramp and the wave texture and go shift D to duplicate them. Go shift A now and add in a color mix color. Just move these out of the way. We'll connect the top one to the top factor, the bottom one to the lower factor and change the mix type to be screen. Now when you connect this up, you'll see no difference, but we can go ahead and change the scale now of the second one here. We'll make the scale a little bit bigger on this one by going 0.4. And you can see we have two different patterns now being projected on the bottom there. That's looking pretty cool. And I like to change the black values here to not be 100% black. So you still get a little bit of that area light showing up through it. And then the white values can be slightly warmish if you want. And this will kind of mimic the color of the sun then. And then the last thing is to animate this just like we animated the waves on top. So to do this, we're just going to go to the phase offset. Click there, go hashtag frame. And for this one, I wanted it to move a bit faster. So go to slash 12 instead of 24. Go ahead and do that for both these. And now you can see if we play it back that those caustics are also moving across in the bottom. The last step to our shader, which is gonna add a lot to it, is grabbing our water. And now that we have some light passing through, we can add some volume to our shader. So I'll go shift A and add in a shader, principled volume. Drop the volume into the volume socket on your material output. Doesn't look exactly great at this point, but we're gonna go ahead and turn the anastrophe up a bit. Something over 0.5 is good. And then I'm gonna turn the density way down to something like a 0.12. So you just have a little bit of those light rays kind of coming through there with the caustics. Then if you go shift A and add in a volume absorption node, we can mix these two shaders together with a shader mix shader node. Drop it in there, put this one in the bottom. This one we can crank the density up a little bit higher on. And if we change the color of the volume absorption, this kind of changes the color of the water. Now water is supposed to be white, but sometimes you might have dirty water if it's in like a river or something. So you would change this to be a little bit brown, or you might have water that's been dyed or something, and then it would be a little artificially blue looking. I do like to just give it a tiny bit of a blue hue. I think it looks kind of good. And that's essentially it. We have dynamic water that actually has volume to it. So depending on how deep it is, it will get more opaque and harder to see. And this water can be used now in so many different situations or scenes. As a quick example here, we have a basic swimming pool mesh. If I jump over to this, you can see just some tile and a few different levels, which would be basically a swimming pool. And what we can do is we can take our cube and our area lamp, just position it in our pool here. 
pulling it up to the right height, and then just scaling it up along the shift Z to fit in the pool there. It scales off a little bit because of how we set, had this set up before. We can make this like 8.5 now. As you can see, it looks really good. We have the animated caustics moving at the bottom of our pool here. If we want to pull up our shader editor, you can see how easily we can adjust, say, the density of the water if we want it to be looking like deeper water or the strength of the noise texture here for a little bit extra ripples on top of the water. We can kind of change the color of the water. This water's definitely gone bad and this water has definitely had too many kids in it. <laughs> As you can see, it looks super realistic. You have tons of control over it and it works in a lot of different scenarios. So that wraps up this video on how to create realistic water in Blender. I hope you guys have success creating it because we kind of need it to survive as 3D artists. But that's gonna do it for me guys. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.